Hey everybody, long time no review. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing the Stub 3 Ausführung E by Dragon, of course, kit number 6688 for Jim over at Kitmaker Network and Amarama.com. This is the first short barreled stug I've seen from Dragon. I was wondering for a long time why they didn't make one. It seems like they've used a lot of the parts from the G series that's been around since like 07. A very uh, good series. Um, they reuse a ton of it because it doesn't really need to be fixed. There is more interior in this and obviously the smaller gun, uh, L24. Looking at the back, um, that's a strange font choice. But yeah, they're, they're talking about how we got the stub gun. I'm assuming they've reused parts from their old uh, Panzer IV kits. This would be a new section for the interior. I imagine the pedestal mount for the gun would be the same as they use on the long-barreled Stugs. Um, a number of photo etch things that were not on the old ones, like front fenders and uh, some kind of deflector around the exhausts. Looks like the S-Tracks, which is not uh, something I'm happy about. Uh, the box comes like this, which is, we've got the S-Tracks and stuff, and then quite a number of screws. It seems like they are primarily bagged two or three at a time, which has been Dragon style for quite a while now. So our instructions. Um, firstly, uh, I noticed the Volstad box art. He's probably my favorite, so I'm glad to see him back. Um, tons of blue. Uh, most of those sprues are going to be, like I said, the Stug 3G sprues. So if you look at this, you can really quickly get an idea that this sprue seems brand new. And it's like the only one without anything blued out. Step 1 and 2 are unbelievably familiar to anyone who's built a Dragon Stug before. Uh, the same idler with the photo etch listed here, so hopefully it's in the kit. The last review I did of a Dragon Panzer III um, said this was there, but it wasn't there. Um, so the same idler assembly, same wheels, sprocket, rollers, um, the, the tensioner for the idler, that all looks exactly the same. Not too bad. I think the hardest part on here for me has always been this little cap that goes over the idler adjuster. They're having us fill a hole here, which is annoying to me. I, I, I don't care for that because in general it tends to mean that they've reused a hull. I know it's not a big deal, especially something up in there, but uh, a little strange. Again here, though, telling us to remove uh, elements of the G hull or the later hull. Um, luckily, they're not having us remove this roller station, so I'm guessing they didn't use the later hull that we've been using on Stug 3Gs because these early Stugs would have the the three equally spaced rollers instead of the farther forward one, which came around uh, Panzer 3H. All the rest of the stuff here, though, swing arms and um, suspension looks exactly the same as we've seen before. Although, remember to remove these tabs. Removing more stuff from the rear plate. Again, not a fan. Uh, the exhausts look very similar to what we've seen before. you got to remove these little dots here, but that's actually been around for a while. This is a very different deflector than we're used to seeing on the Gs and the, the, uh, the later Panzer III series. Uh, these little toe mounts, pretty simple. Just telling us to put wheels on, a couple sub-assemblies going together. This thing here, I did this on the Tauk Panzer III. That's a little weird. I remember uh, these pieces can be quite thin, so it's just a little bit fiddly. I always have a, an annoying time with these uh, smoke launchers on the rear Panzer III's when Dragon does them. I don't know why. Uh, here's our photo etch option for our front fenders. Uh, removing a piece of this as well, which can be kind of a pain because it's a long space to cut. Uh, the optional, of course, underneath, like double rear fender. Tools going on, wire cutters, uh, S-hooks, toolbox. All pretty standard, looks like the clasps are molded on, and your standard, um, quite complicated jack assembly. And then telling us to drill a couple of holes right there. All relatively um, standard Panzer III vehicle type stuff. The other fender looks about the same. We've got our shovel going on, looks like the longer type. Uh, the axe, the fender supports, barrel cleaning rods, again the two two-piece rear fender, the photo edge option. No, it's an option, actually. Doesn't say or, so that might be a mandatory thing, that photo edge front fender, which could really bone some people if they're not real good with uh, edge. Uh, front plate of the superstructure going on. We do have MP40s with slings to go in here as they're more visible. Inertial starter and crowbar. Um, I think it's telling us to remove the locator tabs because you're just going to flat glue it down somewhere else other than where that tool was originally um, made to go. Now we're, we're going on to interior stuff. We have the mount for the periscope, which has an option to have it up or down. 
removing pieces from the radio kind of boxes off the sides, like these armored boxes. I think these were used on on F as well, which is probably what this was tooled for. Nothing huge though, as long as it's a flat surface, I don't mind that at all. Doing the antenna, which hopefully it looks like it comes with, which is good. And then the radios inside here, um, they actually look a little bit easier than the Stug 3G and Stug 4 radios, which had different types of frames to assemble, I believe. All right, so here we have uh, hatches, which obviously you could pose in a manner that you like. On the roof, and we've got some hinge detail and the kind of handle to open it. Here we get a good top view, which is very helpful. Again, options for parts. I'm wondering if that has to do with the open or closed. Front hatches, again, filling holes that size. That might be annoying. That's, that's a pretty large hole to fill. Here, um, the engine deck doesn't look too bad. Basically exactly the same as any early war Panzer III, like up to um, like H. So this, these little scallops or whatever these are here, and just your standard intakes and photo etch grills. More stuff on the engine deck here, and then we're moving on to the ammo stowage and interior. This looks like the breech. This does look very much like the Stug 3G interior, so we've got multi-part seats, the periscope um, for aiming, the pedestal mount itself. Could be a little different. It's been a while since I built this Stug from Dragon. Um, here's your floor. So this is like the floor panel pieces and the mount itself. That does look awfully familiar. All those bits would go together. They are having you remove this, which I don't recall doing that before. And eventually getting all those sub-assemblies together. Here's the sleeve going onto the gun. Again, having us remove stuff. I'm not a fan of this. They were using lots of parts from their Panzer IV kit, I would imagine. That's why you're getting stuff like this, which is frankly lazy. And then uh, ammo stowage and putting it all together. So, uh, step 18 already. Um, putting the upper hull engine deck and gun down with the front plate, the fenders, and the interior. Now it looks like tracks go on, and then a bit after that, which is sort of strange, but let's see what we got. Um, a little piece of photo etched near where the fenders connect. Um, we have a no-tech light uh, that they're telling us again to remove some of the mounting points from. And um, other types of lights on the front. I don't know why we're doing this so late in the game. I actually don't disagree with that. That seems kind of um, smart. And then down here, um, the antenna on the rear. And that would be a thing that you want to do last. There's just little uh, fiddly photo etch bits. I normally knock those off. I've done one antenna like this before on a, a Stug B. Marking options. Russia 41, Panzer Gray, Crimea 42, um, Ukraine 42, uh, Crimea 42, and Berlin 45. Interesting. So you got tritonal there. I'm not sure if these are yellow. You wouldn't be using yellow in 42, so... So the tracks are DS, unfortunately, only. I could have swore I read a review online that said that this came with both, but I appear to have been mistaken. I had my hopes up for a bit. So we have DS tracks. So far, um, the guide horns don't look terribly bent. There's some, if you see that. There's also a significant, like if I pull it straight, there's a pretty significant kind of, like, snaking to it. These are what are called Type 3A, which means they have the double insets on the front here, so the three raised and two inset parts, and a hollow guide horn. These are the most common type of Panzer III IV tracks around, and I have tons of uh, Magic tracks laying around. So after I do the build up for Amarama, which I will just slap these things on and take pictures, I will certainly remove them and put Magic tracks on. Um, anytime Dragon puts these in a kit, I'm going to give them a lower score and a lower opinion. I don't think the detail is terrible. If we compare the DS with Dragon's Magic Tracks, here are some Kaizen workable 3As. Um, I just... it's not a terrible detail, but it is definitely less pronounced on DS or any kind of vinyl. Now, I think that that is... Um, Really not as important as you'd think because um, the the raised surface on a, a track like this does get worn very quickly. So they're normally not, you know, factory new, but 
I just am not a fan of these and it's disappointing to see them still. So this is the photo etch sheet. So we have, these are, these go by the vents. Um, these are the in intakes. This is this deflector. I'm actually not sure what those two things are. Oh, fenders, obviously. And not much else. Now, I was looking at this, and maybe I mistook this on the, uh, the, the Panzer III H build I did. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, I just referenced the instructions, and they want me to build um, a circle out of three of these. So one, two, three, one, two, three, you know. So they used to give you photo etch sheets that had circles on them, and I don't, I, know, I understand that this would save space and you'd use less etch, but there's also going to be a seam. Now, I haven't checked. Um, I actually know a guy who owns an idler, so maybe they were built this way. I know on Tiger I, um, the reinforcing rims on their late wheels were made up of little shapes like this and then bolted onto the wheel. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. If somehow this is more accurate, great, but this is a huge pain, and I am not a fan of that. Otherwise, though, the sheet seems typical dragon, not too soft, not too stiff, and everything seems very nicely made. Decal sheet is pretty sparse. We've got a handful of numbers, um, just 373 and 110, some Valken Kreutz that are black and white, some that are just white, and this unit marking right there, and a few right there. Cartograph as usual, so it seems very good. Well, again, very limited options and very small. So the first uh, full-size sprue is a combination of many other smaller sprues. We have our road wheels, uh, drive sprockets, final drive housings, torsion bars, there's an MP40, um, spare wheels, the mounts for the spare wheels, the return rollers, not a whole lot else, and these little things that hold the fenders down. Also a C-clamp over here, and the cap for the idler wheel. This roll wheel um, sprue has been being used on every Stoke 3 and Panzer 3 kit that Dragon has put out in the last almost 10 years, so it won't be a, a surprise to anyone. It does still look good, uh, not much to complain about. You've got Continental instead of Continental on the tires. Um, drive sprocket and the idler both look good still. No aging, you know, as far as the way the sprue is holding up. Final drive looks very good. Torsion bars seem clean. Uh, we've got some wing nuts there. Other side of the wheels, sometimes these things get broken. This kit was brand new and sent to me um, right away, so luckily none of that's been broken. Return rollers are good. That C-clamp looks good. These guys here have that clean, nothing's broken. Now this particular part here, if anybody watches my videos, I had a huge problem with the way the Bronco handled this piece. So this thing, um, these are very common, and they're used to, to hook in to either like a hood on a car or a fender on a tank. And so the way that Dragon does it, if you look, you have the latch itself, a piece that comes out of it, and the thing it hooks up to, whereas Bronco had done that very, very um, carelessly. This is what a real one looks like. So um, my problem with the way that Bronco had handled it was just that this was a solid piece and then they wanted you to just glue something, you know, to a solid piece that represented this thing. And it was just very, very um, poorly done. And if you look at the way Dragon handles it, pretty close to what I have, just with the part coming from underneath it and then the thing it connects to. So it's all one piece. Something this fine shouldn't be done in multiple parts. Also worth mentioning are the pins um, for the spare wheels. Now they just have the flatter end and the, the long bar. There's no um, other details there, but that's really all you need in the scale. So those look good and aren't broken. Our next brew says Panzer III on it. That's all it really says. And we have lots of bits for Panzer III's and Stugs, obviously, but more tools. So shovel, axe, uh, crowbar, wire cutters, uh, parts for the antenna cradle, the escape hatches from a Panzer III, the fender supports, the hinges, the air intakes, lots of little things. Everything looks really good from where I'm standing. These hinges uh, always work and look really good. Everything on here is very, very well done. I've seen this through many times as well. There's parts for your jack, uh, the Tetra extinguisher. There's your two options for those rear fenders. Intakes still seem good. More tools. There's your wire cutters with the mount here and the tool clamp. 
There's some older style headlights and some tie downs. Inertial starter. Everything on there looks really good. Some S hooks with clamps as well. Next up, we've got another sprue, which identifies as a Panzer III sprue. Um, we've got a large armor plate, um, some engine hatches or access hatches um, of varying sizes, um, a front plate from a Panzer III, so we won't be using that, some intakes for the front, more of the latches that I just showed you. Um, we've got a vision port for the front of a Panzer here, um, one type of MG mount. A lot of this was used in the Tauk Panzer. Uh, top front plates. More tools, uh, side plates, all kinds of stuff. I know we'll be using this as well. Everything's really cleanly done. Again, we have these latches here. These are intakes for the front. This would be the interior for a front armor plate. Some headlights, another fire extinguisher, the armored cover for a driver's visor. Here's your tensioners for the idler. This plate looks good. Everything seems like it is still really well made. Some of these sprues though, like this guy, because I was mentioning this in the instructions, they did seem a little bit thinner plastic-wise um, when I built that Tuck Panzer III. These are the extensions for towing in the front of the hull. Um, these would be return uh, roller supports. Next up, this sprue uh, is labeled Stug 3 uh, Ausführung F8. So we've got a single baffle muzzle brake there, um, a front armor plate there, some of the earlier type hatches, two different types of MG shield, uh, some radios, part of the periscope, uh, another wire cutters, another shovel, all with clasps. Uh, these look like mounts for maybe the jack, maybe something smaller. More hinges, more latches, more fender supports, um, armored visor. Again, everything seems really well made. No real complaints there. Everything seems crisp. Even these little parts. These shields look really nice. Hatches look really good too. Detail on that radio. Very cool. This is our periscope. Another radio. So these radios in this kit do come from the F8 kit. Tools look good. There's a very specific mounting there that might be for on the uh, the intakes of a Stug. Even these clamps for like the jack or whatever these are for. Very well made. Shovel looks good. Then we have one of two engine decks. Um, I'm not sure which one we'll be using. And then we have some turret hatches. But this piece is beautiful. So, again, again, I'm not sure if we'll use it, but it's very well made. Next up is another sprue that identifies as a uh, Stug 3 Ausführung F8. Superstructure, intakes, uh, the armored sides, the roof, the, uh, the top of it, the antennas, um, some kind of mangled thing here. Oh, that's broken. Uh, that looks like the antenna cradle. So if that is, it is wrecked. And then the plastic option for the F8's um, periscope cover. So these look really good. These appear to be antennas, which look really good as well. All this stuff is in pretty good shape. That's a beautiful, strong molding right there. clamp for something. The roof looks good. Now here's our broken piece. Oh, spare antennas I think is what this is. So that's an option on the F8. Next sprue is labeled again F8. We have some of the covers for the rear engine hatches, some fenders, and another engine deck. These look really nice. These are the two with the option for the spare wheels. Fenders. Textures on both sides. And then our other engine deck piece. Um, 
On first glance, I can't discern the two from each other, but they both seem very good. I'm sure there's a difference that I'm just not noticing. Now we have this, which is labeled Stug 3G. Um, it looks like sort of accessories in a, a bunch of small sprues together. So we have tools with clamps over here, including the famous empty clamp. The jack and the jack's mounting. We have another extinguisher, some S clamps, some tow cable eyelets, which I didn't see a tow cable um, in here, so I'm assuming that it's done either with styrene or not at all. Then more tiny little mounting parts and smoke launchers, uh, fender supports, stuff like that. These tools look really good, usually enough for me. Sometimes you might want to take off little parts that they, they have as nubs instead of wing nuts and replace them. Um, you do want to hollow out the inside of this, this clamp handle. It's a little on the thick side, but usually works pretty well. There's our no-tech light. I'm going to get up inside of there. That's a little simplified. Um, there should, you know, in real life, there's a slit inside of there. But I can understand the scale why they, they do that. This is a sprue from the initial um, Stud 3G tooling. We have fenders. These are the mounts for those armored things above the hatches. More of those things as well. That's the front lower armor plates. And more armor plates. All of these things with these big bolts. Now that's really all there is to this sprue. Still, everything seems to be very crisp on the molding, and should you need a ton of spares for your Stug 3G building activities, this would be an excellent sprue to have. Yeah, I can't see any problem with the stuff on here. Now here, the interior gun parts, for the most part, which I had suspected, are from the Stug 3G interior. So you have, like, the actual floor, the bit where the gun meets the breech, like the pedestal mount itself, the floor itself, there's the mount, elevation and traverse wheels, all of the parts, again, from the, the Stug 3 one. Now, accuracy, people may say, well, you know, there wasn't an identical mount to the, the, the L24 um, with the longer barreled variants, there's a few. Um, and that's probably true. I don't know that I could discern them. So uh, that's a pretty esoteric thing but I'm sure there is a bit of an accuracy going on here. They've done the same thing with their Jagdpanzer models where they use the L70 um, and the other guns that were put on Jagdpanzer IV with the exact same internal breech and, and all the other parts. Detail on this is really nice, actually. All of these dragon sort of um, partial interiors look really good when they're put together. I don't really have anything to complain about. There's the radios. I think these are the Stug 3G radios. I don't think we'd use these. We might, though. Now, there's only a handful of radio types. I'm not sure which ones were found in different Stugs. There's the seat. Looks really nice. That floor looks great. Here, we have two separate sprues which are labeled um, Stug 3S Fearing E, which means they are just for this kit. This is probably the only bits that were made just for this kit. We have a roof. We have... Um, a mounting for the L24. Here's a sleeve for the gun. Some strange interior parts, more parts of the gun sleeve. There's the breech guard, so that is different. That's good that they made that. Um, the front lights would be different. There's the stowage. Parts of the floor will be different. The firewall. So enough parts that, you know, it, it may not be terribly inaccurate. That's good. There's that roof piece, which would go this way. Looks pretty good. There's the sleeve, very nice in one piece. Barrel cleaning rods, the breech guard. This would be the front piece under the gun, right there. That's where the actual gun mounts itself. Floor with some nice texture to it. Racks look okay. I think Tamiya did these very similarly. Actually, I have that kit sitting right next to me. I think on the old on the old Tamiya one, we actually glued this separately. I don't think they were on the wall itself. You can see here my periscope's broken. But um, this is a B, not a E, but they have some very similar interior details. But there's only seven there. And dragons, these are molded straight to, which will make painting them kind of a pain. Um, but we have quite a few more than that. 
That's enough interior for me, frankly. Um, after having built a few interior kits recently, Ryefield and many of them, a little burnt out, to be honest. Here, a very famous Stug 3G sprue. I don't think they've ever used a different one on a Panzer III kit since it was tooled in 07. Uh, suspension components, swing arms. Uh, there is a rear plate and some other parts here in the deflector, but mainly these um, four shock absorbers and the exhausts, um, idler tensioners as well. All very, very common and used on every Panzer III kit. Again, despite its age, I don't see any flaws on this sprue whatsoever. Everything still looks very good. MG34 right there. Yep, not much to say. And as I suspected, um, here is a Panzer IV sprue. Which, just when I saw the stub, the L24, I was like, well, they probably reused some Panzer IV sprue from back in, like, 05. So I think that's what this is. I haven't uh, dealt with a super kit, even in review form, in a long time. But if you look here, you have the shell, the catch bag, and the barrel, which we do need to modify, unfortunately. Um, and a sleeve, breech assembly. There's the matlet for the old Panzer IV. Nice sprue. Um, again, from a very excellent era of Dragon kits. These... Um, Panzer IVs. I have a few. They're awesome. Everything on here looks incredible. And we have this brew, which isn't labeled. Um, we just have a lower front plate, uh, some hull extensions. Looks like you know, that's where the final drive would go. And some very small parts that I can't identify at all right now. That looks like a ventilator. Maybe a, a turret evacuator vent. I'm not really sure. Some really small parts there. Hmm. Looks nice. I think this is what they said we had to remove. At least they're on a flat plate, but you will lose the texture if there is any, which is unfortunate. Okay, so this sprue would be from the 135th Panzer III Ausführung J initial production, which, to anyone paying attention, um, was the first Dragon kit I ever built, and I have um, a lot of nostalgia for, so it's nice to see this sprue. Um, we do have the styrene tow cable, another wire cutters and fire extinguisher, more engine hatches, a crowbar, and just some little bits. This tow cable looks okay. Um, I don't like the ones that Dragon uses when they give you metal. I prefer the ones that like Ryfield do or Eureka aftermarket are, the, you know, copper. So um, this is fine for me, as long as that's accurate. Another wire cutters. Not needs to replace these tools with um, photo etch clamps if you don't want to, and I never want to. I did try those recently, by the way. Um, not my best day, but these parts all look very good. And we have a little sprue here. It's not labeled, but um, my 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 senses tell me F8. Judging by that roof. Um, on here we have just some grab handles and small hatches. Obviously the roof different parts for that roof, and that looks like parts for the rear smoke launcher. Again, everything looks totally crisp and good. There's actually a little flash right there. Say it ain't so. Everything else looks pretty good, though. I'm guessing we probably wouldn't use this. But yeah. That might be a little burring there, I can't tell. Uh, Stug 3, Ausführung F, I'm not really sure what to call those. It looks like some more barrel cleaning rod stuff. That's definitely inertial starter. Those are barrel cleaning rods. I think these are just parts of the turret roof. Or, sorry, superstructure roof. The parts themselves look good. If those are mounts for a tool, they're missing some detail there, but that's okay. Antenna cradle, by the look of it, may be what they gave us this for. Done in one piece, whereas a lot of times you see it in two. Not bad. You've got some pretty significant texture there. Holy cow. Um, I don't know if that's intentional. I'll have to look into what that is. I don't know. I have the F8 kits. I don't have the F kit, but good lord. It's crazy. I mean, I have I have things from the war that look like this, but they sat out in a field for 70 years. Anyway, um, it is only on one side, though, and 
not decide with the number. I don't know. If anybody knows, tell me, because that's, that's weird. This is our hull. It is pretty much the standard that we've seen before. However, I noticed some really interesting things about it. Let me see if I can get in here and show you. If you look really closely, you can see the shape of the escape hatch hole and the holes for mounting the hinges. It's like micro sink areas, like they're, I think that's what I'm seeing. It's on that side and that side right there. So it, it's not an outline where you're meant to fit it like on the old Imperial ones. This is a hole normally. On the, so this is a Panzer III hull, not a Stug hull that has been modified, luckily by them, so we don't have to fill that because I think that would be a little bit much. Here's where you would put the return roller station. Uh, all the details that are on here though look very good. No broken pegs as far as I can see for the swing arms. Everything looks really good. And lastly, clear parts. We just have periscopes and the, the periscope for the sight as well. There's usually not much to look at on these, as they are just like a rectangle with two tapered ends. But they seem eh, about as clear as they usually do. A little harder than like the Ryefield stuff. There's that periscope. So that's just my first inbox look at the Stug 3 Astrung E from Dragon. I thought for a long time, why doesn't Dragon make short-barreled Stugs? Because, you know, until F, you didn't even have a long barrel, and the Stug, you know, early war Eastern Front Stugs are a pretty cool subject. And for a long time, all you could do was this um, Tamiya Stug B, which is, by the way, one of the first uh, models I ever built. And it is really cool looking, but uh, there's actually some dimensional inaccuracies with this, at least in comparison to every other Panzer III model I've ever made now. I don't own any Panzer wheels to go measure, but these do seem smaller than Dragon's wheels. Like, you can't interchange parts from this, so I was always curious what the deal was with this, but it's an excellent kit. It had the kind of um, novelty spring suspension. Um, unfortunately, there were van tracks, but it was really the only game in town other than uh, old Dragon Imperial Series stuff, which is kind of ugh. And if you're me, I know that I have friends that make them and insist that they're fine, and I've seen uh, people I know, even locally, just make amazing um, work out of them, but I'm lazy and kind of crap when it comes to making things look better than they actually are, so I like to have a nice modern kit of things. And I think it was a waste uh, for Dragon not to make these sooner now, that being said. Uh, the DS track thing, mm, no, that's bad. And the amount of um, modifications that you have to do to things like the old Panzer IV stub or uh, just filling in holes on plates. It doesn't seem uh, undoable. It's just annoying because there are companies, uh, Tacom and Meng and Ryfield, who listen to their customers a lot better than Dragon does and are willing to do the things that, that will make people buy their stuff and Dragon does not seem to be doing that. They're trying a little bit. They've put out Magic Track kits recently, mostly in response, though, to people like Tack on putting out all those King Tigers. Then you see Dragon put out, oh, here, here's a King Tiger with Magic Tracks. Yeah, well, still it looks like they're doing like the absolute minimum to stay in the game. So I will build it um, on Armorama, and I'm going to try to go in with a, a without a bias, because I did build that Panzer III, uh, the Tauk Panzer III H, but then after having built other kits, um, as professional reviews, I went back and kind of rethought how I, I felt about all the modification. So I don't think I'll be just tanking it score-wise, but I do think that the DS needing to be replaced is you're, you're asking your customers to go to aftermarket, which means that when they calculate the cost of this piece that they want to make or this, this model they want to have, they're now going to say, well, I can get this base kit for you know this much, but then I will also need to spend money on this other thing. Now, I have become a very big fan of, of the Kaizen workable um, tracks, right? But, so these are 20. I think I even saw that AFV Club made some workable Panzer threes. So otherwise, you go free will. But my point of it is you have to calculate my aftermarket tracks plus my kit equals the cost of the thing that I want to do. And they may not want to pay Dragon prices if they automatically need to replace the tracks. Um, the, now, Bronco did some early um, 
Stugs recently, but after having built that Bronco Panzer 3A, um, not for me. Uh, I understand that there's a type of modeler who that is for, but uh, so but those might be competing with with Dragon for business. It's not just this Tammy one. This Tammy one is very specific. It's just the B. Whereas Bronco put out a few, and they have some pretty serious detail. They just have some pretty rough molding problems, in my opinion. So um, it's interesting. Like many things in our, our sort of scale tank hobby thing, everybody tends to do the same thing at the same time. No one does anything for years or whatever, and then all of a sudden, poof, they're all out. So I'll build it. We'll see. But I'm, I'm glad they're at least putting out short-barreled stugs.